Let's go over the solutions to uh, our practice here for multiplying binomials. All right, so we start out pretty straightforward. What I'm going to try to do is, for each of these questions, try to switch it up a little bit, our strategy. Uh, talk about different methods. So uh, if you don't like one method that I use for maybe A, you can watch along and maybe B, I'll use a different method that makes more sense to you. And you can choose one that makes sense as long as you're able to successfully get to the answer. They're all valid. <clears throat> all right, um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Get real close. All right, so starting with the first one, we're just going to do some straightforward distribution. So I'm going to make sure that my a value multiplies by this a and that 4. So I'm going to get a times a plus a times 4. And then I'll add that to 1 times a, because that's this guy's got to multiply by both of these terms as well. And that's the only rule, however many things you have in this bracket. They have to multiply by each of the things in that bracket. So the 1 multiplies by the 8, and the 1 multiplies by the 4. So we add a 1 times 4. And so <clears throat> when we simplify that, uh, we say we got a times a, so that's a squared, because we have two exponents that are 1 here, and we add those exponents to get a squared. a times 4, we can really just write as 4a plus 1a, which we can just say is, we, we leave it as 1a, that's fine, plus 4. And then I'm going to group like terms. So I can see that I've got two variable a's and uh, two terms with a variable a with the same power, which is an exponent 1. So I can add 4 a's to another a. So it's going to give me a squared plus 5a plus 4, that leftover 4 here. And that 5a is just this 4a plus one more a. All right. So uh, uh, for b, I'm going to try a table. So here, we just take each of these terms. We'll have a b and a negative 3. And that's this guy here. And I'll use blue for this one. So I'll put a b here and a positive 2. And what else do we got here? I got some green. So this is going to give me four different terms. I'm going to get the product of b times b, which is b squared. The product of b times negative 3, that's negative 3b. Product of 2 times b, that's 2b. And the product of 2 times negative 3 is a negative 6. And you can see we have some like terms here. So when we write all of those terms out in a line, it's going to look like b squared minus 3b plus 2b minus 6. We're going to group those together, and that's going to give me b squared, negative 3b plus 2b. That's going to give us negative b minus 6. All right. <clears throat> so for this one, I'm going to use the acronym FOIL. This is the third method we talked about. This is where we just think of this memory device. We talk about the first terms and the outside terms, then the inside terms, and then the last terms. So let's color code each of those. So let's, uh, I wish I had four colors. I only have three. So let's do the first colors first. We'll call this blue. These guys are the first ones in each set of brackets. So this is one set of brackets. The first term is at C, multiplied by 2C. So that's going to be C times 2c. Okay, then we'll do our outside terms. We'll call that green. So the outside terms are this c again and this negative 1. So I'm going to subtract those. So I'm going to call it minus 1 times c. Okay, uh, then I'll use black for the next one. Those are the inside terms. That's going to be kind of the terms that are on the in between, like in the in the middle here, so it's going to be five and two c. So I'm going to add five times two c. Let me just see if I have a red pen kicking around. Give me one second. <clears throat> All right, I successfully stole one from Mr. Gawk, so don't tell him, please. 
All right, and we'll use red for last. So the last terms are the last ones inside these brackets. That's 5, and that's negative 1. So we'll get a negative 1 times 5. And you may wonder why I'm writing the negative 1 first instead of the positive 5. It just so happens that it's easier if we write the negative terms first, because that negative also sort of serves as a subtraction. And that's a, kind of a nuanced idea, the difference between minusing, sorry, subtracting 1c and having negative 1c here. And uh, it's in a way, it's kind of both. Um, and that's something that just comes with practice, is feeling comfortable with what to do with those negatives. So c times 2c, so it's uh, going to be 2c squared. We've got negative 1c, which I can just call negative 1c like that. We've got 5 times 2c, so that's positive 10c. And negative 1 times 5 is just negative 5. And then, as you can see, I've got some like terms here. These guys are like negative 1c plus 10c. So you can imagine taking negative 1 and adding 10. It gives you 9c when we're done. All right. And then we're done. We have no more like terms. That's as simple as we can make it. All right. So we're going to do the same thing here. So we've got a fraction and a decimal, and we've got multiple variables. So there's a few ways in which this fraction looks a little different than the others, but we won't let that bother us. All we're going to do is just go slow. Say, OK, we'll have 2d times 1 half d. So uh, that's going to be, I'll write it out here. So we'll do 2d times 1 half d. OK, and then I'll have 2d times negative 3e, or negative 3.5e, so that'll be minus 3.5e times 2d. And again, I'm just writing the negative first, but I could really do either of them first. Uh, what else do we have here? 4e times half d, so I'll add 4e times 1 half d. And then lastly, I'll have 4e times negative 3.5e. So it's going to give us, I'm just going to multiply those together. I think you guys are getting the hang of this by now, probably. So it'll be 7, so it'll be negative 14e squared. So I'll take a second just to uh, multiply those. 2d times half d, so it's 2 and a half multiplied to give me 1. And d times d is d squared. Uh, negative 3.5 times 2 is negative 7. And then we just have a d and an e which I like to put in alphabetical order. Uh, 4 times 1 half is 2, so we'll add 2d minus 14e squared. Okay, then we're going to group these like terms, and that's going to give us d squared. Negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5de minus 14e squared. All right. So <clears throat> that's all well and good. So uh, I think you guys are probably getting the pattern, so I'm going to start going through these a little bit more quickly. What makes these guys a little different is uh, not any of their initial mechanics, but really just something that happens later on. So I'm going to skip through here. f times f is f squared. f times 5 is positive 5f. Negative f5 times f is negative 5f. Negative 5 plus times positive 5 is negative 25. And as you can see, there are some like terms here, and there's a positive and a negative version of the same thing. So they have an effect not just of adding together, but when you have 5 and you take away 5, you have none. That leaves us just with an f squared minus 25. It's a special kind of expression called a difference of squares, and we'll talk about those in due time. A similar situation here. What you notice is that both of these questions have kind of the same uh, expression in both brackets, and the only difference is one is a negative, one has a positive. Negative, positive. Again, we're kind of foreshadowing a little bit about what will be important later on. 6g times 6g says 36g squared. 6g times h is positive 6gh. Negative h times 6g is going to be negative 6gh. Negative h times h is negative h squared. 
those guys add together, and again, they cancel out in the same way the 5 and the negative 5f cancel out. And it leaves us with 36g squared, and then we have a negative h squared, or minus h squared if you prefer. And we're good. All right, now for questions g and h, you got to watch out. What we don't want to do is try and distribute the squared into the set of brackets. This is what we were calling stealth foiling. This is actually really, when you say something squared, the whole bracket is squared. So the whole bracket is multiplied by itself. And let's just give it a try and see what happens when we do that. We get 2f times 2f, so it's 4f squared. We get 2f times negative 3, that's negative 6 f. Uh, we have negative 3 times 2f, so that's another negative 6f. And negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. And so again, we have two like terms. And that uh, overall becomes 4f squared minus 6f minus another 6f, so that's minus 12f plus 9. And that is another important type of uh, uh, product, and we call that a, a perfect square trinomial, which is a fancy name, but we'll get to that later. <coughs> so same thing here, we've got to just recognize that really means 100g minus 4h times 100g minus 4h. And then we can multiply across like so, so we get 10,000g squared uh, minus 400gh minus 400gh plus 16h squared. And so overall that gives us 10,000g squared minus 800gh plus 16h squared. Okay. So <clears throat> next, I'm going to need some water here. All right, so next we're going to just fill in the blanks. We're going to try and make these expressions make sense. And we start kind of easy, and we get kind of hard. <clears throat> so uh, the first question is, okay, well, these guys are all going to get multiplied together, so I'm going to have x times something, and then x times 6, and then 5 times something, and then 5 times 6. So I'm going to get x times blank plus 6x plus 5 times blank, plus 30. Okay, so I can see the 30 is, is accounted for here, so I'm going to just ignore that for now. And I can see here that, and so this is a bit of guess and check. You can guess what goes in here and then multiply it through yourself and then see if it works. But I can see that actually this would be an x in this case. And now when I replace each of these, that gives me an x squared. And this 5x plus that original 6x together give us that 11x squared, or pardon me, 11x. So there's just an x in here. All right. Uh, for the next one, uh, you're going to try some numbers. So what you might have recognized is the last terms often give us this constant term at the end. So 3 times something is probably going to give us 4. Pardon me, 3 times something is probably going to give us 12, and that number is 4. Uh, but if we weren't sure, we would test it. m times m is m squared. m times 4 is positive 4m. 3 times m is positive 3m. 3, 3 times 4 is 12. And then you can see that when we group these guys together, that's when we get that 7m. Even though when we put a 4 there, it wasn't sort of working out nicely originally, because we're just getting that 4m is, I guess, what I was trying to say. I don't think that made sense otherwise. <clears throat> All right. So this one had a typo originally. This should have was originally a 30, but we've uh, replaced it. Was a typo. I think I've adjusted that on Google Classroom now. Uh, but if I hadn't, watch out for that. For that. Uh, anyways, uh, we have to multiply p by something, and we're going to get 2p squared when we're done. Well, very simply, that's going to be 2p. And you can multiply each of these through and see how, when we're done, we end up with 13p. We get that 10p from the 5 times 2p. 
and then p times 3 is 3p. So overall that's 13p. Okay, this one is for sure a little bit more challenging. Um, you know what? I'm going to suggest you pause the video if you haven't done this already and really play around with some things here and then like guess something. Who knows? Then multiply them through and see if you get this when you do. If not, try and go back. If you have tried that and you're still struggling, I'm going to give you a hint that there is a positive here and there are two terms. Then now maybe say pause again. Give it a try. Place, play with some numbers there if you hadn't already tried that. And if you have tried that and that's still unsuccessful, well, I can tell you that y times something gives you y squared, so that's got to be a y. And then you can pause and guess some numbers that go here. And lastly, it is going to be a 5. All right. So these questions get a little bit hairy here. Uh, so there's lots sort of happening, and uh, but we're just going to keep our head down, and we're going to just do one thing at a time. We're not going to let ourselves be intimidated by that fact. Okay, so the first thing is we have this stealth boiling question. What this really means is e plus 3 times e plus 3 uh, plus 4 times e minus 2. And now I can start to distribute all these guys. I'm going to get e squared for the first terms. And this is kind of similar to questions we've done earlier. e times 3 is 3e plus 3e plus 9. And for this guy, we get plus 4e minus 8. Positive 4e minus 8. Okay, now these guys are going to group together. So I, that is going to leave me with an e squared. I've got, oh, I've also got this other like term here, these 9 and a negative 8. So you can't really tell the color difference on the video so much, so I'm going to put a double underline under those guys. So my e squared, I don't have any like terms, but I've got 3e plus 4, 3e is 6e. So it's going to be as 10e, and then 9 minus 8 is 1. So this is just a crazy person way of writing e squared plus 10e e plus 1. All right. We'll repeat here. Uh, again, we'll just do one step at a time. This one's a little bit more friendly, a little bit more straightforward. Uh, and in fact, we've already expanded f minus 5 and f time plus 5. It was right here. Now, you might notice the products, pardon me, the factors are in an opposite order. And so that actually doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what order you multiply things in. I'll prove it to you. f squared minus 5f plus 5f minus 25. And I'll add to that these guys. And I don't really need brackets like we've been adding when we're, uh, like we've been including when there's addition. It's only when we have subtraction that we're going to need to brackets to make sure all of them are getting subtracted. Uh, they kind of default to being added. So then we get f squared plus 2f minus 2f minus 4. Okay. And so what do we get here? We got some like terms, a bunch of f's, and I've got some f squareds, and I've got these integers, negative 25 and negative 4. Oh, I should use another three lines there. Okay, so overall it's going to give us f squared, and f squared is 2f squared. Negative 5 plus 5, those cancel out. Uh, and also a negative 2f and 2f. So actually, we don't have any f terms. And that leaves it with uh, just this negative 25, take away 4, which is negative 29. All right. So next, uh, we'll have 2g times g and 2g times negative 3. So we get 2g squared minus 6g. And then we'll do my negative 1g minus 3, so that's negative g. My plus 3. And then I've got to make sure we're not distributing that squared, even though we may want to sometimes. We're going to put a big bracket around this. Mm, could have waited on that bracket, but that's okay. And we're going to rewrite that as a product of two things, because that's a stealth boiling situation. Okay, so I don't have much to do here, but maybe I can group those like terms while I'm sort of waiting for this to all get resolved. So minus 7g, because i got to rewrite it anyway, so maybe I can just do a little bit less rewriting. Now I'm going to distribute these guys in. So I'll do g squared 
plus 2g, and then I'll distribute this guy as well. This 2, and that's going to give us another positive 2g plus 4. And now I've got to get all these guys out of this bracket. I could actually group like terms first if I want, but that would be another whole line, or I can distribute the negative 1 into all these things, this whole bracket, and you can kind of choose what you want to do first. I think I'm going to just distribute the negative inside all of here, this first. And you can, if you get really comfortable with this stuff, you can start doing multiple steps at once. Okay, so now we'll just group the leftover terms, and uh, we'll call it a day. And I've got this guy. I'm just going to put circles around those so we don't make it too messy. So for the reds, we've got a 2g squared minus g squared. So it's going to be just a regular old g squared. Uh, I've got negative 7g take away 2 and then another 2. So it's going to be negative 11g. And 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Okay. Huh. So, this one is, again, a little bit more straightforward. We just got to remember that uh, negative here that we got to put a bracket around the product of these guys. Uh, other than that, we're just going to kind of plug through. So, 2h times 3h is 6h squared. 2h times 1 is 2h. Negative 9 times 3h is negative 27h. And negative 9 times 1 is negative 9. And then we're going to take away product here. So that's going to be, uh, I've got 2 times h, Oops. so that's going to be 2h, and 2 times 3, so it's going to be positive 6, and negative h times h is going to give me negative h squared, and then negative h times 3 is going to give me negative 3h. Okay. And uh, again, I can group like terms if I want, or I can distribute. In fact, I can do both at once. I'll group these guys while I'm at it. Make my expression a little simpler. 2h minus 27 is going to give me negative 25h minus 9. And then I'm going to distribute negatives to all of these. So we're going to get negative 2h minus 6 plus h squared plus 3h. Because really that negative just changes the sign of all of these guys. All right. Then we're going to group like terms. So maybe I'll use a box for my h squared terms. I'll use a circle for my h terms. A couple of those guys. And a triangle, blue triangle, for these guys. OK. 6h squared, another h squared. That's going to be 7h squared. My h is next. So I'll do negative 25, take away 2. Is negative 27 plus 3 is negative 24h. And negative 9 minus 6 is negative 15. Okay. So this stuff gets pretty gross. And you can expect if you go to the pre calc route, you'll get pretty used to seeing pages that look like this, meaning lots of different numbers and letters and rules and patterns. Uh, and to a certain extent, math beyond a grade 10 level kind of looks like that in general, but especially the pre-calc route. So if you don't want to do anything like this, go the Foundations 11 route. It's a fun math course. Uh, to do pre-calc 11, you better like this stuff and also probably be okay at it. Like, be pretty consistent at being able to get from a question to an answer and without getting sort of confused about which rule to use where, do I add or do I multiply, do I change the powers, when do I do that, uh, and so all those things, if you're having trouble sort of like learning to say the language of this sort of arithmetic, uh, like now is a good time to put a lot of emphasis onto that if, if uh, pre-calc 11 is a goal for you. All right, so here we start out with a typographical error. This is clearly be 4a and 4c. <sighs> All right, uh, so we're going to use this diagram. We're going to find the area of this triangle. And area of a triangle is base times length divided by 2. So we're going to multiply these guys together. So the area of this triangle is going to be 4 plus 2i times 4 minus i over 2. All right, so then we will simplify that. 
and so we'll multiply, we get 16 minus 4i, and then I'll use another color to do my 2i times 4 is positive 8i minus 2i squared, and that's all going to be divided by 2. So I can group like terms first if I like, or I can divide them all by 2 first, it's really your choice. I'm going to group like terms, I think it's of these like a bracket, so I like to do everything on top of a fraction if I can first. Negative 4i plus 8 is positive 4, nope, positive 4i minus 2i squared, and then we'll divide those all by 2. So our area is going to be 16 divided by 2, or 8, 4i divided by 2, or 2i, and negative 2i squared divided by 2, or negative i squared. And that is our area. So now we're going to evaluate the side lengths of the triangle, allowing i to be 1. So that means 4 plus 2i is going to become 4 plus 2 times 1, which is 7. Okay? And uh, this guy, 4 minus i, is going to become 4 minus 1, which is 3. So that means really we've got a triangle that has a, a length of 7, a height of 3, or a base of length of 3, width of 3. And we're going to find the area. Okay, and so it's going to be 7 times 3. So the area of the triangle is going to be 7 times 3 divided by 2, or 21 over 2, or 10.5. Oh, and the units here are centimeters, so it's going to be square centimeters. Okay, let's see if we get the same answer if we put in uh, 1 into this question here. Oh, shoot. 4 plus uh, should have been 6. Stupid me. So I'm going to adjust that right there. And right here. And right here. And that should give me 18 over 2, which gives me 9 centimeters squared. Now, uh, let's go back. Let's take this answer and say, okay, the area of our triangle is going to be 8 minus 2 or pardon me, plus 2 times 1, because we're going to let i be the value 1. And then we'll take away 2 times 1 squared. And then we'll just evaluate. So we have 8 plus 2 times 1 is 2, minus 2 times 1 squared is 1. So that actually gives us a value. Where did we go wrong? Man, why do we have to go wrong? Oh, right, I miswrote that. Man, I'm the worst. That should actually just be an i squared. And so that gives me 8 plus 2, 10, take away 1, which is 9 centimeters squared. All right. And so if you notice, we get the same answer whether we substitute 1 in for i uh, initially and we just do this multiplication without using any algebra, or we do all the algebra first, and then we punch in the value for 1. We're going to get the same value uh, for the area either way. All right, well, let me know if you have any questions about those. Uh, good luck studying.